Hello everyone, my name is Scott Davenport and welcome to Perfect Inspiration. Today it's uh, very special for me to be part of this series. I've been watching Perfect Inspiration since it first launched almost two years ago and uh, the videos were a major factor in my decision to purchase the On One Suite and make it part of my everyday post-processing workflow. So to be a part of the series, then you know, giving back to something that's given me so much is, is a real treat. So uh, let, let's just get started. I just returned from a vacation through Italy with my family, and on our last night in Venice, I set out to capture a view of the Grand Canal. It was an overcast evening, so not a lot of things happening in the sky. But there was plenty of activity on the canal, boats coming and going, people eating in the cafes. And as I was standing on the bridge taking these pictures, I realized right then and there I'd be blending several frames together in perfect layers to get the composition that I was after. So I'd captured uh, the gondola on the front, and I took a few more frames so that the canal would be less busy in certain areas. Now I'm an Aperture user, and the Perfect Photo Suite integrates beautifully. Here I've adjusted the white balance and dealt with a little chromatic aberration. And now I'm ready to bring the photos into the Perfect Photo Suite. So I'll right click and open them as layers in Perfect Layers. I want each of the images to be its own layer in a single document. So here we are in Layers. We've got our three files loaded. And the first thing we're going to deal with are these two uh, vaporettos, as they're called, on the left-hand side. I'm going to mask those out and just um, unclutter the background. So grabbing the masking brush, lowering the opacity to uh, about 78 or so, and we'll just brush through here, punching down into the lower layer. I'll do this a couple of times, modify the opacity a little bit more so I can get a nice blend. And that's looking pretty good there. All right, um, the last thing I'll do here, since I'm really done with the layer beneath this one, I'm going to merge it down. I'm not going to keep that one around. There's nothing else that I want from it. All right, next we have to deal with the boats that are on the right-hand side. This lower layer, the boats are better aligned, a little crisper, less passengers jumping in and out. So again, we'll grab the mask and brush, we'll bump it up to 100 this time, and just paint through and punch down to the layer beneath. We'll get uh, some of the sidewalk as well, some pedestrians in the back, get that a little cleaner. Just make sure you've done a good blend all over this area. That's looking pretty all right. And lastly, we'll merge it down again. We're done with that bottom layer. I don't need to keep that one around. All right, there we go. Okay, now it's time for the perfect eraser and get rid of some of these other distractions. First is this you know, chunk of bridge. Um, you know, the Rialto Bridge is crowded. It's you know, you and 300 of your friends vying for uh, a spot to take a photo. Um, let's see, we get rid of that little white spot. And now for uh, cleaning up the background a little more, I've got a couple of boats here. They're just not adding to the picture. So we'll swipe over that one. And then this uh, little power boat here. Let's get on this guy. We'll start with the boat, and then we'll also need to work on you know, the wake that the boat's left there. And we'll see how the eraser does. Um, it's, uh, some, so far, so good. We may not have to uh, involve cloning at all. Let's try this other side here, right up there. Good. And let's check over between the pilings. Uh, just a couple of spots to smooth it out a little bit and you know, break up what was the wake of that boat. All right, that's pretty good. Okay. Right. Last is uh, some of the, the fringe on the tops of these roofs, you know, the antennas. Um, oh, that one didn't go out good. Let's get a little tighter on that. You want to overlap on the edge you want to keep with the eraser, but if you go too much, you know, the, the tool can get confused. So um, it does pay to be a little precise, but you do want to overlap there. All right, so a few more of these antennae, and we'll be in pretty good shape. This one here, a few more on the left, you get the idea here. Um, you could spend a lot of time going through and removing any and all the distractions. I'll just deal with the last couple that are up here, 
and then we'll uh, we'll move on to stylization in uh, Perfect Effects. Okay, with the distractions gone, let's move over into the effects module. And for any of my landscapes, the first thing I go to is dynamic contrast. This filter is just fantastic. So look at that. You know, the buildings are looking great. Um, you know, the only thing is a little harsh on the water. And so I want to tone that back. So I'm going to grab my masking brush and I'm going to paint it at 100%, which may seem strange at first. Um, the reason I do it 100% is I want to have the effect applied or removed evenly across this water. You notice that I'm you know, clicking and dragging, so I'm painting in some places, and in other spots I'm just doing a single click to get around some tighter areas. If I were to do all of that with a percentage, I have overlap areas and I find those harder to blend. But now that I've got the whole of the water painted in, uh, you notice the mask is totally black. Now I'll lower the opacity and switch to the paint in mode. So I'm going to paint back in the effect. I don't need the perfect brush anymore. Big old brush, and I'm just going to sweep across everything, covering you know really the entire photo. I can be sloppy at this point. And notice the mask is grayer now. I've removed some of the effect, and I like what it's done. It's kept the water a little soft. Let me sweep over it one more time here. And yeah, there we go. So that's looking nice. Now let's uh, move on and work on some color. So I'm going to add another filter and grab the color enhancer. And right now I just want to increase color. And that's already looking nice. With the exception of the background, it's a bit of a bluish cast. So we will grab our masking brush and we'll just paint away some of the color effect from the buildings and from the sky back there. Um, just you know, keeping that uh, tone down. That's looking good. We'll get through up in there. Maybe one more click on that building. Yeah. All right, now let's boost the reds of the cafe. Now that's where I want uh, your eyes to go. So we'll grab another color enhancer and this time use the increaser, the, sorry, the red enhancer. And that does a wonderful job on the awnings. And we'll just tone down this umbrella in the back. Uh, a couple of clicks on that to just remove some of that color. All right, now I want to add some sunshine. So thus far you've watched me. I've been doing everything in the, uh, the right-hand filter stack. But, you know, you can always go over to the left-hand side and see previews. And I want to choose the radiance, I think, for the sunrise, or sorry, the sunshine effect. And let me hide that pane so I get my big preview. Uh, I really like what it's doing everywhere, except on the gondola itself. Um, that's, uh, it's kind of muting it or, you know, in that bluish tinge we got to watch out for with all that water. So we're going to use the perfect brush, 100%. Let's put on our um, mask red so we can see that we've done everything. And we'll just paint on through here so that we can eliminate the sunshine from just our, uh, our main subject, the gondola, so it'll stand out a little bit more. All right, looking pretty good. Okay, now let's add another filter and get some clarity in here for that you know, higher depth of field. So in the tone enhancer, We'll use the clarity option in this filter, and um, that's ooh, that's a little hot. So let's back that off just a bit. And I'm also watching the water. So just like dynamic contrast, where we had it, um, the water got a little bit too hard. Um, I want to soften it. So I'm going to copy the mask that we used in dynamic contrast. And I need to paint this again. We have it already. So just copy it pop back up to the tone enhancer and then paste it. And I'm just going to back it off just a little bit and keep that softness there. That's looking good. All right, we're getting close. Uh, next, we need to darken the sky. So grab an adjustment brush, switch it to darken, and just paint through what's become you know, a very washed out, bland sky. Um, and this is not going to be a, not an area we want you to focus on. Our eyes would be drawn to that naturally because it's so bright. Just paint through that. Uh, conversely, what I want to do is brighten up you know, the, the gondola, you know, our main subject here. I want to add some brightness to that. So add another adjustment brush layer, this time for a light. Now we can use 
can use the mask that we had on Sunshine. Remember, we painted it away from the gondola. So if I copy that mask from the Sunshine layer and then paste it here, it's going to do the opposite of what I want. Very simply, click Invert, and now the Brighten, or Lighten, I should say, is only applied to the gondola. The last thing I like to do to almost every photo is add a vignette. So I'll grab a vignette, and I really like the big softy preset. We're going to do a little tweaking on it. Um, the first thing I like to do is bring the feather down to zero. And so you can see where the vignette's going to be applied. And here I need to increase the size so it's just the corners. But also, I'm going to grab the crosshairs, and I'm going to recenter it just slightly. I'm going to start uh, clicking and dragging this around, biasing it to the lower right of the photo, just ever so slightly, because I want your eyes to be seeing the gondola and the cafes. And then finally crank that back up to 100% to get a nice soft fade. With that, we'll click Apply to have all of these effects saved, and that will bring us back to perfect layers. All right, here we are. So here's our final image. I'm going to do a one last little touch-up on this, uh, this little bit of water. It can be construed as a spot. Okay, and now I can save the image and finish off my uh, round trip to Aperture. And here's our final image. This is where we started. And this is where we finished after doing some blending in perfect layers and stylization in perfect effects. I hope this gives you some good ideas for your photos and your post-processing. My name is Scott Davenport, and thank you for watching Perfect Inspiration.